Today on Queensland Weekender. Again, welcome to Queensland Weekender for another Saturday afternoon. You know, for me, some of the most memorable stories that we've done on this show have been ones that have taken us into country Queensland. And it doesn't matter whether it's the red dust of the outback or a farm closer to the coast, it's not just about the scenery. For me, it's the people that tend to make those stories more memorable. And speaking of memorable, here's a farmer with a face it's hard to forget. Shane Webke, how are you, mate? Good, thanks, Dan. I guess it's difficult to forget a face since it's ordinary. Oh, I think you've been a bit harsh on yourself. Possibly. But look, mate, I couldn't agree with you more. In a time where we hear so much negativity about our rural communities because of the drought and other things that are happening here and, and the perception of these, these places are actually dying and struggling, it's wonderful to be out here and, and, and refreshing to see these wonderful people doing wonderful things. Shane's right. We're going to catch up with some of those people on today's show. Dino. We're at the front of a panel beater shop, mate. I thought we were out here to talk to farmers. Yeah, I know it's a panel beater. So I've just got to duck in here and pick up some oil. Oil? What are you talking about? Come on. Karen McLennan and her husband Bill run B&W Body Works, where they sell their own brand of oil. Not the stuff that goes into engines, the edible kind. Take a look. Ah, this is the sort of oil we're talking about. You've got to admit, it's just not the sort of thing you expect to see when you walk into a panel shop, is it? That you can buy soap or some oil to cook with when you go home. I thought all the panel shops had it. <laughs> <laughs> the McLennans laugh about it, but at their farm, Summer Reva, it's serious business. They've traditionally grazed cattle on this 50,000 acre spread, but a decade ago, the pair planted their first olive trees. So Bill, there seems to be hundreds upon hundreds of trees here. How many is there? There's uh, 1,200 trees here. There's about seven different varieties. Last year, we got an agronomist out because we picked a, one tonne of fruit off from last year, and he told us what to fertilise them with, etc and we picked five tonne off from this year, so they increased by 500%, and we're hoping to double it again this year. As the trees get older and bigger, they're gonna fruit more and more. And do you find yourself becoming more proficient as, as the years go by? The hours I spend up here, Shane, it all, it's all pain. <laughs> Getting plenty of practice. <laughs> That's it. Bill nurtures the trees while Karen prepares the fruit. An olive press and filter at the farm means she can capture the freshest virgin olive oil. And this year, she'll sell table olives too. So I would have thought you were busy enough, what with the cattle and, you know, the body shop. Who came up with the idea of producing olives as well? Well, my sister and her husband went for a trip um, through Italy. Yeah. And when they came ba back, they came for a visit. And he said, this environment in this country out here is just perfect for olive trees. Oh. He said, why don't you grow some? He said, they grow over in Italy just on rock. He's read some romantic novel that's made it all look and sound so easy and wonderful. Oh. I can almost hear the Italian violin playing now. He said, just, you just whack them in the ground, they'll just grow easy as that. Soon found out it's not it's that hard. easy. Is he still on your Christmas card list? <laughs> yes, he's a very nice bloke. <laughs> Can I try one? Yes. Mmm. They're really good. And a nice big pet. There's a lot of great stuff happening in rural Queensland. To learn more, especially about the Every Family Needs a Farmer campaign, check out the AgForce website or give them a call. And so you have it, a little bit of the good life here in Outback Queensland. I've got to say, Shane, it's opened my eyes. There's plenty going on 
out here in the bush. Well, I think what we're seeing on the show tonight is the really the changing face of rural Queensland and yeah. the fact that people are being very innovative because they have to. If they, you know, their resilience is shining through. They want their communities to stay vibrant, and that's exactly what they're doing. And it's very refreshing. It's very positive. You're absolutely right. And when next you're thinking about outback Queensland as a holiday destination, maybe you should be thinking about something more permanent. That tree change is in all of us and this is a fantastic destination and a great place for plenty of opportunity. That's the show for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Seven News is coming up in just a couple of minutes from now. Thank you, Shane. It's been great having you along. Love it. Sophie Formica and the team return with the Great South East tomorrow afternoon at 5.30 and I'll see you next Saturday for more Queensland Weekender. See you then. Right, let's hop in. More of it. Queensland Weekender is produced in partnership with Tourism Queensland, QR's Travel Train Holidays and Ag Force. Every family needs a farmer. Our vehicles are supplied and serviced by the Motorama Group. You can catch us at the same time next week when Bridget finds some inexpensive fun on the Gold Coast. As for me... So when the sun has gone down and the horses have been tethered, there is plenty of fun stuff to do around this place. <laughs>